Now, the tools that we covered in the previous video aren't the only tools to kill weeds once they've emerged. In this video, we'll briefly run through some of the other weed control tools available to organic growers, starting with the fireworks. Now you might have seen these videos of the lightning weeders going around at night impressively electrocuting those broadleaf weeds with hundreds of thousands of watts of electricity. These tools are growing in popularity, and a few organic growers are even offering them on a custom service basis. Plenty of conventional growers facing herbicide resistant weeds have also turned to this technology. Where I've seen them most effectively used is in a soybean field when cultivation is no longer an option, as a kind of rescue treatment when the race is on and it's being lost against the weeds. Next up, one of my favorites, flame weeders. While not quite as impressive or novel, they do have a similarly exciting element of danger and have their place on an organic farm. They can be used as broadcast tools in the same way blind cultivation tools are used, to set back a relatively immature stand of weeds. One particularly useful application is in young corn, when you're V1 or V2 stage, where weeds have become a problem, often due to precipitation at inopportune times, that keep a farmer from getting into the field and cultivating. In this scenario, while the growing point is still below ground, a farmer can burn down the weeds and the crop, setting the clock back to zero and benefiting the corn, which can jump right back out of the soil. You can also use directional burners and shields to get between the rows and even some in-row weeds without really hurting that corn crop. So while I did just joke about these being very exciting and kind of dangerous tools, I do want to emphasize that they are really dangerous tools. With the weed zapper, you have to, as a bystander, stand really far away because that electricity moves through the ground. With the flame weeder, you want to make sure that you're treating it like any open flame next to something. So if you're passing a building or passing a pile of stove or, or in a really dry scenario in your field, you want to make sure that you're not lighting more on fire than you think you are so you don't ultimately have this raging fire behind you after you're getting done cleaning up your cornfield. Much less sexy, but still sometimes necessary, is mowing. On all organic farms, some weeds will outlast our attempts to eradicate them with early tillage. With all weeds, farmers do have the option to hay them off before they reach maturity. You can break down mowing into two categories, marketable and unmarketable. With marketable crop destruction, a grower or manager might turn to swathing a forage or chopping it to make silage. Drying weeds, and therefore the crop, down will give the combine less to chew on when the weed pressure is just too high to direct cut. This is really common in small grains, regardless of the production system, but it's a near necessity on many organic farms. From wheat to buckwheat, swathers are a key tool on many organic farms. A less than ideal scenario that uses crop destruction as a strategy is chopping your corn for silage if the weeds have just become too unwieldy and yield will take a serious hit. That's an example of making the best out of a really bad situation. But there are times when a farmer might need to admit that they've lost the battle and that part or all of a field has become so infested that one, yield is going to be really impacted, two, harvest would be nearly impossible to get through, and three, the weed seed contribution to the seed bank would be substantial. In these cases, a grower could consider terminating the whole crop. Short-term losses ultimately result in a long-term investment in the productivity of your fields. Next up is hand weeding. It might harken back to the days of your dad or maybe your grandpa's time, but it is something that many organic farmers actually find a worthy investment. A grower or an advisor would need to run the cost-benefit analysis before making the call, but know that it's an option to consider, and some growers use migrant crews seasonally to clean up particularly hard-to-beat infestations in, say, their soybean fields. And lastly, organic herbicides. They really do exist. Most are some form of acetic or citric acid, while others include naturally occurring oils like cinnamon, clove, or lemongrass. They can be effective at controlling immature broadleaf weeds when sufficient plant tissue is contacted by the oil, though there's no residual activity and expensive additional applications are usually required for continued control. I'm going to keep this quick by saying that though they do exist, 
organic herbicides are almost never cost effective enough to justify use in field crops, short of spot spraying in one or two spots to effectively kill a very particular weed. One 2010 study put the number somewhere in the $400 to $600 per acre range, which is already likely more than hand weeding, and untenable when you consider the repeat applications that you'd likely need in order to make it effective. Now maybe in the future we'll be able to use precision egg to get the herbicide just close enough to the plant to reduce the costs, but for now it's just a non-starter. All right, I will admit this was a long one, needing two parts to cover it. But effective weed control is the cornerstone of a successful organic field crop farm, and it is worth spending the time on. We really only scratch the surface on so many of the principles and practices involved in organic weed control, partly because there are so many really good resources out there already, many of which are linked to in the lesson notes, but also because weed control is really crop, farm, region, and soil dependent. This is one area where further reading and pursuing hands-on experience while working with your organic farmer clients will be super necessary. In the next lesson, we'll take a longer view and talk about the profound importance of long-term crop rotation and managing the weed seed bank. Getting this right could mean an easy road ahead, or it could be one that's just choked by hardship. See you in the next lesson.